Thank you, Shay. Yeah, she's amazing. And uh, when she uh, told me that I was coming the same day when uh, this event happened, I couldn't resist and say yes. I tried to say no. I said, I'm coming in at 5 o'clock in the morning, but she, she win. She, she's a good negotiator. <laughs> uh, and I really love this place and the energy, so I'm really glad uh, to, to be here. Um, I mean, Italian, as you can tell from my uh, Scottish accent, right? Um, and I've been working in conflict resolution for 16 years now, uh, actually 25, 16 of which in, in Colombia. Um, but lately, um, I realized that conflict in New Jersey, where I live, is also around me in urban areas with the, with the gangs. And so at one point I thought, um, it makes sense not only to go always far away from the place where you live, but also look at where conflict is, where you live, and see if you can do something about it. And, and so I started reaching out to gang members uh, in, uh, in New Jersey. We have 800 different gangs uh, only uh, in New Jersey. Um, and they, I, I wanted to share with you a story that um, gave me some wisdom that I just wanted to share uh, about this particular environment. Um, for about a year now, I've been working with uh, a very unique social entrepreneur. His name is Charles Rosen. Uh, he was in the movie industry and then became a big guy in the branding industry. Uh, sold everything and uh, created this a uh, regenerative farm uh, where he is producing apples out of which he gets an organic hard cider. But the whole uh, process of production is actually done by former gang members who are just uh, ex-offenders who come out from um, prison. He has this very cool concept, I think, that uh, you know, healing the world means also healing the land. That's what he does with his kind of agriculture, healing the people and healing community by giving also job to people that are structurally in poverty and, and don't get uh, to 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 get good jobs. And so when we met, and uh, he heard that in my life I helped a lot of uh, ex-combatants to demobilize and reintegrate in society, he asked me if I could help him to develop a, a program just to develop the skills that these workers coming out of prison needs in order to be functional at work. And we just worked from the presupposition that you can turn an, a gang member into an excellent farmer. And uh, to do that, Charles hired a great, great, great farmer, his name is Pete. Now Pete is a genius when it comes to trees and plants and, and vegetables and all of that, but he's about 55 years old and in his entire life he worked by himself. He and his trees. And, and so he's not really used to work with other people. Less with people who are ex-offenders who know nothing about farming and that we ask him to turn into farmers. So what would happen when, when, I, when I started working with them is that Charles every two days would call me and say, oh, Pete lost it again today. He screams at the guys. He doesn't work with them, wants to work with them. I think he's going to drop the job and the ball. If he does that, we can close the farm. So can you come up and whisper something into his ear? And the reason why Charles says whisper is because a common friend we have, Abigail Disney, uh, called me once the, the leadership whisperer because that apparently is what I do. Okay, so I try to whisper something in the ear of Pete. So I go up and uh, I sit down with Pete and I listen to him a little bit and, uh, and then I say, you know, Pete, I, maybe I, I would like to tell you a little bit our concept and framework and what my role is here in the work for development program. And I start telling him like, some of the principles and Pete says, I'm not a social worker, I'm a farmer, right? And, and then I listen to him, so I, and these guys are now never gonna become a farmer, so I, I would just you know, let them go, all of them. So I listen to him, seem agitated, and I say, Pete, I have a story for you. And the story goes like this, once upon a time, there was a judge and a doctor, a great scholar, who at one point just decided to change career, and he wanted to become a gardener. And so he used all the skills, all the knowledge that he had to build his new garden. He bought the best land, the most expensive seeds, 
and he applied methodologically every skills he had to build this beautiful garden. But together with some flowers, what came out are lots of weeds as well. And so he had to pluck up the whole thing, all the weeds, all the flowers, toss them away, and start over again, creating nice lines with all the seeds, putting the seeds in the land, waiting for them to flower and to blossom. And again, a lot of weeds came up. So he was already a little bit more frustrated because he thought he had used the best methodology, so he unplugged everything and started over again. Put all the seeds, better than before, waited, and a lot of weeds came up again. So this time he was really frustrated. So he said, I need some good advice. And he remembered that there was the royal gardener who knew a lot about this. So he went to look for him, met with the royal gardener, and, and said, I need your help. And the royal gardener said, tell me. And so the doctor turned gardener told him the story. The gardener listened to him and said, I can help you. And so the new gardener said, oh, thanks God, because I really want to resolve this problem with the weeds and get rid of them. And the gardener told to him, looking him in his eyes, and I looked in the eyes of Pete, and the gardener told him, you have to learn how to love the weeds. And so I looked at Pete, and Pete looked at me and left. And I got into the car and went back to New York. I haven't heard from Charles for two, three days, a week, two weeks. And at one point, after about a month, I went back to the farm to have a workshop. And I see Pete and the guys having fun, laughing at each other, and we do the workshop. And at one point, the exercise, I asked them to meet in small groups and to share whatever they learned from that exercise. And I see that Pete, instead of doing the exercise, comes up to me. And he whispers in my ear, Aldo, I learned how to love the weeds. And that's a story that I wanted to share with you tonight. Thank you.